I am Carlos Canejo with the Santa Barbara Ventura County Small Business Development Center. We're here at the True Part Manufacturing and today we're going to talk about lean manufacturing. I am a uh, certified in lean manufacturing and a certified Six Sigma black belt and with me today I have my partner Dean and Dean is going to tell us a little bit about the Small Business Development Center, how we work and how it benefits you and your business. Good morning. Hi, I'm Dean Dela Cruz. I'm also with the Small Business Development Center, or primarily called EDCVC. EDCVC provides uh, consulting services and training, low-cost training, to small businesses in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. I'm also a certified lean manufacturing uh, and a Six Sigma certified. We provide these services to small businesses like True Part to enable them to become more competitive in the marketplace. Some of the services that we provide in SBDC are business planning, financing, and of course in operations management we have lean manufacturing. And that's why we are here today. And Dean, let's tell them about the best part. What's the cost to the business owner on this? Nada. Zip. Absolutely free, folks. Uh, it's courtesy of different uh, organizations, uh, Department of Commerce, the State of California, the um, uh, Manufacturing Enterprise Partnership, the County, the Chambers of Commerce. So this is an opportunity for you to leverage uh, your monies. Uh, you know, people still talk about the economy. Uh, luckily it is improving and so one of the things that we take a look at uh, is that it has changed though. The old economy where it was a great product, then we marked it up, and then um, a profit has totally changed. The new economy is customer demand, less cost equals profit. So in today's economy, Dean, can we control profit? You can control profit, but primarily you have to be able to rein in your cost, and the only Absolutely. thing that we can compete on is time. Quality is given nowadays, and price is, you don't have any control with the pricing because of the demand from the marketplace has been changing, like Carlos said. The only thing you can control is time. The speed in which you can develop your product and produce your product at much lesser cost. And like you say, if we don't have quality, game over, right? Game over. Game over. So today, the only way that we can control profit is through reducing our costs. And we don't talk about costs of just little things. We talk about big costs that we can't control, such as lead time. How fast can we get it through, as Dean says, time, through our processing steps, whether it's a service, whether it's manufacturing, whatever, and really eliminate the 8 to 15 classic wastes that are known as lean wastes in any system. And so we're talking about excess transportation, a necessary process, overproduction is always the number one. Uh, we're talking about um, excess inventory. We're talking about uh, delays, uh, rework. Isn't it interesting, Dean, that we never have enough time to do it right the first time, but we have plenty of time to do the rework? Well, the, the main essence of lean manufacturing is continuous improvement. And that's continually eliminating waste as they occur in a day-to-day -day, uh, activities in manufacturing. So let's go with what is lean manufacturing and it, you know it's been defined in many different ways it's defined from doing less for more to what i call and use in many different ways as it's this, it is a systematic application or approach to identifying and eliminating waste in pursuit of perfection that means it continues in improving processes and you, right? and you know the key is systematic you know the the, the kiss of death is that a lot of companies dabble in lean mm -hmm. and they, they, they talk the words, ooh, right. 5S, ooh, right. whatever, but then it becomes the flavor of the day. The key is to establish a system as part of your ongoing strategy, business strategy, and make that part of your business culture. So as we take a look at continuous improvement, we continue, we take a look at the roadmap, what's the short term, medium term, long term, and in some cases, I've been on assignments 8, 10, 15 years where they're, where they're never done. We're always seeking perfection. We're always seeking the next improvement. And so that is really the key. We can't just have a, a one day, teach us about lean in one day. 
does not happen. Absolutely not. That's a really short-term point of view. That is really true. And that's why lean is not just an application of techniques. It is also a business management philosophy. And that's like you said. It is holistic in its approach, uh, focusing on increasing value to the customer. And we talk about value and waste. What is, what is value? Value is anything that the customer is willing to anything pay for, right? Anything the customer is willing to pay us for. So right. Lean takes a look at the opposite. What is the customer not willing to pay us for? Like rework, right? Excess touching, excess movement, redundancies in our, in our services. So again, it could be any system. It could be a restaurant. It could be a hospital. Lean in the hospital example would be instead of taking the patients to x-ray, putting them in the hallway and waiting for their turn at the x-ray machine, we purchase a smaller portable x-ray unit, we wheel it to bedside, instantaneously we take out all that excess motion, all that waiting, and so Lean takes a look at eliminating value, non-value added activity that is really not helping us out and really making our job a whole lot harder, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, so now let's go to what we mentioned about waste. The waste comes in seven to eight different forms. Namely, um, waiting, which is predominantly exists in most, most companies. Hurry up and wait, right? Overproduction, <laughs> uh, overprocessing, uh, motion waste, you have inventory waste, you have human resource waste, those type of things are waste that actually affects the bottom line of the company. By the way, with inventory, we call that just in case waste. Just in case just waste. Just in case. Well, you know, why do we have all that inventory? Right. Well, just in case the other one doesn't get here. Right. Well, why do we have all that inventory? Well, just in case, you know, we only need 50, but just in case we make a mistake, we need 53 or 60. You know, the, the trick is not to have the excess buffer. The trick is to fix the process so that we get exactly 50 100% of the time. On time delivery, on time, on time production. So everything is uh, on time. You can see, you can control production, you can control uh, inventory yep. in that manner. You bet. Okay. And by the way, uh, Lean is based on the Toyota production system. Okay, Carlos. Now, I guess let's go now to the tools of Lean. Okay. And there are several of them. And the power of Lean is how you apply these tools, understanding the tools and how you apply them consistently and correctly, more accurately. That's the key. So, and, and the key is that, that it's, it's a circle. It's a circle. We, we call that the plan, do, check, act circle. Right. And you're never done. It's just right. you take it each time to the next level, to the next level. And I think what's really important for folks, and we hear about, oh, 50% improvement, 90% improvement. You know, that's okay. And every once in a while, you know, even I get those. Uh, last project, I got a 98% improvement mm -hmm. on a setup reduction, and that's great. You know, but the thing is, for people to understand, it's about baby steps. And again, with this other company where I've been at eight years, if we take a look at where they were eight years ago and where they're at now, it's a huge difference. And so again, the key is to just always garner just a little bit better and a little bit better each time. Yeah, waste always exists. So it is continuous process. You bet. So one of the tools that most experts considered as a basic foundation of lean manufacturing is 5S. So what is 5S? 5S has to do with workplace organization and cleanliness. And really it goes beyond that. And there's two reasons why we go beyond that. The first reason is that if, well, if we are well organized, we have flow. And if we have flow, that's what lean is all about. So value added is about flow. Non-value added, we call that anti-flow. Mm -hmm. So anything that does not add value to the process is actually taking flow away. So 5S helps us create flow. And the 5S, depending on you know, where you've heard it, depend on sort, anything that's not needed from the workplace, take it out. Then we standardize, we simplify, we shine, and then we sustain. That's the Shitsuke part. Right. And if we add the sixth S, safety, right, because that's mm -hmm. very important, mm -hmm. then, then we're rocking. But the second portion of uh, 5S is, as, as a foundation, is that if we are able to manage 5S, mm -hmm. then probably we're going to be able to succeed in lean. But guess what? If we can't even manage 5S, game over again. Right, so what Carlos is saying is that 5S creates an environment 
that has a place for everything and everything in its place at the right place at the right time. So when you need them, like tools and parts, if everything's in place where they are needed, that means you eliminate much of the motion waste for looking or waiting for machines to, to, get, to get ready or even signatures from uh, the, the supervisors waiting for signatures. So all those well, things. But you know what I have to say about signatures? <laughs> okay. okay. So that, that's an approval. That's actually a waste. If we can work it out so that the employee doesn't have to get the signature, mm -hmm. okay, we got more flow. So say even with that, that's a lean concept. How can we eliminate uh, signatures? In one place, I was working for a major healthcare care company, and one of the things that we do it did is we eliminated the need for approvals for our customer service reps to waive uh, monies. Uh, like if their doctor charged them a copay and they mm -hmm. weren't supposed to charge them, mm -hmm. well, I have to get my signature. I have to get my manager. No. We said, you know what? Let's give them the power to sign off up to $50, and then anything over that, then we take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So again, we have totally eliminated signatures, created better customer service, created flow. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, later on, I would think that we could show you how True Part had made such a great progress in applying all these tools that we will mention. Let's, let's uh, talk about, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, there's another tool that we have to mention here, and that's called cellular manufacturing. This is another tool that True Part have used to organize their you bet. work area. You bet, so smaller is better. And so one of the tools that we use to find out whether or not cellular manufacturing works is the value stream map. The value stream map is the workhorse. Next to, uh, or coupled with 5S, value stream map helps us identify the process from the information flow, the transformation flow, and the time through our facility. Again, whether it's a service or manufacturing, could be a restaurant, could be a, a, a garden center, it doesn't matter. It helps us take the value from the customer's arms through all the processes back to the customer's arms and it identifies all the things that are keeping us from providing flow. Okay, so what that means in cellular manufacturing, engineers and managers or supervisors or workers will be able to identify and design a workflow that suits their production. Helping with those combinations of the design and eliminating waste, you now have a workplace that talks. That talks, and, and one of the things and one of the metrics that we take a look at is what is daily customer demand, and we take a look at cycle time, the actual touch time, versus the customer demand, and we call that tack time. And tack time is not a Japanese word like all the other ones, and we use the Japanese words again because all of this concept comes from the Toyota production system. It's a German word, it actually means rhythm. And so what's the daily rhythm that our customers require from us on a daily basis? And we take a look at that with regards to net time available for work divided by daily customer demand. And so every day, even in a highly mixed model, we have a pitch or we have a daily demand that we have to meet. If our cell, uh, cycle time, our touch time is behind that, then we're never going to meet customer demand. If it is on target or ahead of that, then we're going to be able to not only get the job out, but we're going to have excess capacity to take on more jobs, to take on more profitable uh, uh, work that is going to positively impact the bottom line. So let's talk about briefly about what benefit a company can get when they employ cellular manufacturing. What ways can they eliminate? What can we expect from cellular manufacturing? Well, you know, the typical ones are less touch, less movement, less space, actually. We don't need this much space. I had uh, one company, a major uh, golf club, manufacturing company, just moved into a brand new place. Hey, Carlos, we don't have room. We went in and said, hey, you got room. You got all seven straight lines. Let's make them 16 U-shaped mm -hmm. cells. Mm -hmm. right. you know, again, cellular right. manufacturing. Right. And so we took that company from uh, 5,000 golf clubs a day to 15,000 golf clubs a day with the same amount of space, same amount of people. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. So that means not only efficiency, that means profitability. 
And that's what it's all about. It's about productivity. It's about uh, uh, positively affecting your bottom line, making not more with less, but actually using what you have more effectively. Right, so, so by linking all the required resources and put them in, in pro close proximity with one another, exactly. you can eliminate as motion waste and transportation from your original production. And right. keeping those communication channels uh, we easier, uh, yeah. easier, and we empower the frontline employees. By the way, another benefit is that you are actually supervising less. Okay, if you're a control freak business owner, you know you're working way too hard. You've got to empower your folks to do the right things and let the process control itself. And guess what? Then you can go out, you can think more strategically, you can go out and market your business more and let the process and the folks do their work. It eliminates common sense tradition for most That's companies right. of producing work. And, and who's doing the work? The business owner or the employees? Or the employer. Hello? Morning, Shane. Morning, morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good, good great. seeing you too. Good morning, this is Shane Prukoff, which is the owner of True Part Manufacturing Company. Shane is one of the clients that SBDC was able to help, and the project that we did here is actually lean manufacturing. He's going to show you some of the applications that we've gone through and how what he feels the benefit to his company. Dean, let's talk about maybe what was before right you know and what's after it you just smile <laughs> do you want us like say that well uh, since dean has helped out uh, the shop this area where we we're standing before was pretty much warehouse uh, machines that were obsolete not making us any money in fact taking up a lot of rental space um, and now as you can see uh, here we got we've uh, our warehouse system is a lot cleaner and more efficient. All of our racks, which is this is all of our tooling behind us, are all uh, located. Um, every tool, every die has its own location, and so people can go. They don't have to remember where it's at based upon um, the die itself or the job, but there's a bright, shiny number right here, KS1, which allows them to bring Exactly. You know, environment and exactly. so what does that do to the people's stress level what does it do to their success rate it, 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 you know what, what it does is just phenomenal I mean you can see um, you can almost see people a little bit lighter on their toes you, you know bet. they're they're not walking on eggshells they're um, knowing exactly where they're gonna go um, they're knowing where the tools are at and they're knowing that I'm not gonna be behind them like why haven't we gotten this in the machine or you know all those other little excuses that we can have that comes with the tribal knowledge and that's something that we've had to get away from and uh, uh, if we didn't we would be swing, uh, we'd be sinking and now um, you know with with the introduction of 5s and all these other um, uh, things that we were not aware of um, or didn't have the time or patience to um, you know, put in the system as we slowly but surely um, put them in and and fine-tune them and tweak them to our specific needs uh, I mean, the difference is just tremendous. Uh, stress levels are a lot less. So let me, let me ask you something. So if I'm not spending my time looking for jigs and fixtures and tooling, so what has that done to your throughput? What number of jobs did you have before? Because obviously, you know, if I spent a lot of time looking for tooling, that's not time that I'm spending manufacturing. Now, your employees can actually go find the tooling, go find the jig, whatever, and now, how many more jobs are we able to put on the floor versus before? Well, off the bat, um, just starting with our um, our job scheduling and, and then also where, you know, location of the tools and all, all of that, uh, we knocked off 25% of off production time right off the bat. Holy cow. I mean, with, and this was in within two months. Uh, and. Uh, we have, you know, sometimes we're cutting 15 different jobs a day on the water jets and the lasers, and, um, you know, now with the proper scheduling, um, you know, knowing where the wrench is to fix the, the, the machine, um, I mean, when you're knocking off 15, 20, an hour, you know, a day, um, I mean, that just becomes 
you know, not to each person. I mean, it, it adds up. Oh, right? it, it adds it, up. And well, it watch our pennies, the dollars take care of themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. The, and the second portion of that, to, to put a spin on that, is not only have we knocked out 25%, but we've actually added 25% more capacity to the floor. Exactly. Which means 25% more profit. And we love okay. profit. We, we have big machines profit. that need to be paid for, and we want to hire, and we need you know, more detailed MRP systems. So uh, you know, all of these things you know, uh, just add up, and uh, is just a great bottom line for the company. Can you want to tell us what an MRP system is? Well, it's a MRP is a material requirements uh, planning software. It's a software or a system software that uh, enables companies to plan the replenishment of their materials as they are used. There are also some of them also have scheduling part of it. Yep. But as a, as, a, as, a, as a lane expert, we tend to advise our clients to stay away with the scheduling part of the MRP. What we utilize in, instead of that is to use what we call the Kanban, Kanban system, right? right. Yes, right. Put the control on the production floor. Exactly, on, on put the power on the Gimba. production floor. But one of the things I want to uh, add into this is that before when I got involved with uh, Shane, the, one of the biggest concerns that Shane has is that how are we going to find a space for this humongous machine where you have everything in here all laid out. So what we went through, I think maybe Shane, you could share us what we went through and the process that we went through to get to this, this portion. Well, I think the first thing was to um, find out what we needed and what we did not need. Mm -hmm. um, and so going through and uh, tagging the items that were needed, um, sectoring the shop, um, uh, sector one, sector two, sector three, um, going through every bench, every tool, every machine and figuring out what's going to help the company grow and what's holding us back. Being limited on space in this 8,000 square foot shop um, has really um, been a constraint of, on, on us and that was one of, I think, our biggest issues to overcome. Um, I mean, we went through three or four different layouts and uh, we're still not done yet. We're making a couple tweaks, but um, we have this humongous machine in here, something that's taken up uh, quite a lot of floor space, but it's going to be adding a humongous benefit to the company. We're going to be producing faster, leaner, um, and you know, being able to bring back a lot of those overseas jobs. So you think without lean, you would be able to accomplish uh, this? No, we, we definitely would not be able to accomplish this. Um, you know, a lot of this was uh, knowledge I may have uh, you know, thought of at one time, but didn't realize how important it is to the foundation of the company. Yeah. I mean, if you're not lean, you're wasting. That's and right. if you're wasting, you're not, you know, the bottom line is severely affected. So. And, and, and the big thing there is that you're bringing back jobs from abroad back to America. Yeah. Folks, that's really important. We can compete with other countries. We are. If we apply lean. When we take into account customs issues, uh, delays, it's, it's, it's two weeks Quality. from China, you know, just to bring the products over. And then forget Chinese New Year's, you know, you're looking at about six weeks of downtime. Yeah, that's, right? that's so correct. you have to do what? You have to plan with excess inventory for that time. Excess inventory costs us money, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Not only costs us money, but mm -hmm. in-house damage mm -hmm. or it becomes obsolete, mm -hmm. right? So again, we need to bring those jobs back to America. Folks, you can keep using lean and bring those jobs back to America. Okay, let's... So, Dean, what we have here is uh, we have our system of putting our tools in the right location. Mm -hmm. uh, before, as you know, when you were here, we had um, dies laid all about. How did we get a die? Well, uh, our employee would have a work order. On that work order, it would say Reynolds die. And so on the dies, we do have the names of the companies stamped in. Um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with that, our employees would have to come look amongst all the dies, look all the way up and down, um, look in our universal tooling, and try to find the die that said Reynolds. Well, when you have about 100 different uh, dies, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've seen someone spend about 45 minutes looking for a die before. I know what the dies look like. I can come back and go, oh, there it is right over there, and, and, and off the bat, you know, it, I don't have time to do that. I'm in the shop. I'm, I'm not supposed to be in the shop. I'm supposed to be, you know, 
in, in the office. You right. know, so you, to bring so you have over. less time uh, looking. Less right. time, less time looking. So um, you know, with, with our new system that we put in place, um, we are uh, properly marking all the dies. First of all, starting off the bright number KS1 on a KS1 um, on shelf. Uh, not only that. We do already have marked in the customers' names, um, stamped in into the die. Um, along with that, we have the numbers, uh, the, the, the part numbers that go along with the job. And then we also have um, the types of materials that go with the die. This is a system that uh, eliminates um, any type of error. I mean, if you can read, you know what's going into the machine. Mm -hmm. And so w with the system that we have, our employees, they can look on the work order, know exactly where the die is by its location, um, pull the die, throw it in the machine, bring it back, and we're good to go. Um, saving us, you know, like I said, in some cases an hour of searching for a die. Sounds good to me. Yeah, uh, we're loving it. <laughs> Shane, talk, talk us about the scheduling board. Well, what we have here is our uh, scheduling board that Dean had highly insisted upon. Um, you know, before this uh, schedule board, our job orders would place in a pile um, and the uh, employees would come up, pull the jobs in the pile. I would arrange them into jobs that I would want um, done, but it was still, um, you know, it wasn't very effective. We didn't have a good visualization of what the schedule was going to be for the week, for the day. Um, and now, uh, with the schedule board, each job is segregated by its specific machine in its specific time slots. And uh, instead of having the jobs all spread out everywhere, we have them in, uh, in our neat little piles that uh, they know which machine it goes to. And now, uh, our, our technicians are able to come up to the board, see days in advance what jobs are running. Um, and what we have, the information is we have the job, uh, the, custom, the customer name, and the job, and the date that it's due. And what this allows us is to be a couple days ahead. Um, and not only that, with all the different rush jobs that we have on a daily basis. Uh, just yesterday, we had three jobs that need to be finished today. Um, and that's just from orders yesterday. So that allows us to come up, move stuff around, and figure out how we're going to squeeze it in, or can we squeeze it in, and, um, you know, give the give the customers the parts when they need them. And that's what brings them back. So this is basically, you'll be able to plan your resources during the week. But that is correct. And this even goes into not only um, the specifics of the machines and the times, but also um, little breakdowns of cleaning, uh, finished jobs, parts need to be deburred. Um, we have, you know, we keep adjusting it, but as we adjust it, we keep seeing a little bit more of efficiency being squeezed out. We're, we're pushing out the waste and, and, and bringing in the productivity. Dean also, in addition to the scheduling board, um, something that we had uh, put into the process is color-coded folders. These right here, you don't have to read to know what's going on. You see this from across the shop and you know we're waiting on materials. Uh -huh. This job's hot. We better get on this okay, job. Right. And um, so, with the you know the introduction of having this with the scheduling board, it, it's just been a you know like I said the, the difference. Very in good production. planning tool. Planning. People you know don't have to you know even though we want them reading every single thing that's on our work order, uh -huh. um, you know we try to keep it simple um, and efficient. Um, you know, any more time that people are uh, wasting typing or, or you know trying to read something, they know this. The material's not here. We don't have to go in and ask anyone in the office. We know that we're waiting for materials. Another example of a visual tool. Yeah. So, Dean, uh, here we have our uh, our little cell that we got going on. Okay. And, um, you know, it's definitely still in the in the works, but um, we've put through some of the processes that um, you had uh, recommended, and uh, you know, we got our QC bench. We got our uh, production stamping, kick presses, our engineer, all these people are in real close approximation and uh, you know what that allows them to do is be able to communicate um, directly with each other without going through a lot of uh, paperwork you know they got a question they could talk to Jose over here who can check the check the prints right on the file mm -hmm. um, so. we got our QC over here Shane who's able to um, QC the parts as they're coming out of production so how does the flow of work 
Where does it start and well, where does it end? The flow usually starts with our blanking machines. We have blanking machines on both sides of the shop. Our laser on one end and the water jets on the other. So as the, as the jobs come out of the water jet machines or the laser, um, they come to the center location. In the center location, we have most of our other processes. Assemblies. Which is, assemblies, which are our blanking, our hole popping, dimpling, uh, riveting. Um, flattening, um, you know, many different processes, all which, um, you know, requires different tooling that we explained um, previously that's in our, uh, you know, in our, in our system. So uh, here is kind of uh, the, you know, the... What I can see now, actually, the, the workers are pretty much in close proximity with one another so that they can hand off yeah. the work. Yep. Easily, that, right? Exactly, and that's um, and, the, and the next step is to, you know hand, is to introduce the combine so that we can um, right. you know uh, parts they need when they need them exactly when to move it. You know, there's a lot of stuff to remember here, and we're talking about five thousands tolerances. I mean, five thousands isn't much; it's the size of one of your hairs, and and you know a lot of things can go wrong. So good communication and having it, you know, getting it down on paper um, and everyone knowing what's going on is, is really important. So I can see that you also have those uh, in, the, in the quality control inspection area, that you have those folders. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing there? Yeah, inside of those folders, we have four different folders. One is um, our labeling system. Um, it lets our Shane, our QC guy know, and, and also all the other employees um, to, uh, you know, if we have a question of rework on a part, we tag it, mm -hmm. put it aside, and we get a double, triple QC on it, maybe even a customer QC on it, so that we are not sending out bad parts. Um, also, we have our workflow, so people know what the exact workflow is going to be. Um, uh, of, a particular part is going to be um, where it needs to go, the operations, who and where it's going to end up, all the way to shipping. And you're collecting quality data so you can trend it. And we're also um, collecting quality data on almost every single part. Um, the only type of stuff we don't do a lot of quality control on is our artwork, which um, there are no you know tolerances or anything of. Um, but other than that, all of uh, you know the rest of our work all goes through our QC department. Um, we usually take about five different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the customers get that, parts get tagged, um, quality control passed by Shane or whoever's taking the quality control at that time. And, uh, um, you know, it, it gives us you, a sense of, uh, you know. So you're seeing quality improvement in the parts and you see waste elimination in oh, the yes, cellular yes. manufacturing. Um, you know, it's, you don't want to waste, no matter what, you don't want to, um, you know, have to rework a job. Okay. You're, you don't, we right. don't price our jobs to rework. So that's an immediate loss right off the bat. And so having a full-time QC person, um, uh, talented engineers, mm -hmm. um, skilled machine operators, you know, it takes a team and, uh, you know. Uh, and I heard you just added some of the people here. We, we've added uh, three new people. Um, and uh, we're looking to add more. I mean, it's just the work's coming in and we need uh, quality people to support it, which the SBDC's uh, also been able to help us out with as well. As wonderful, as well. wonderful. Here we have one of our water jet technicians. Um, he is at our computer uh, CNC water jet machine and he's programming up an eagle, an eagle that is etched and cut all with our 55 KSI water jet cutting machine. This particular machine made by Omax in Seattle, American made, is able to cut up to 12 inches of steel plate holding tolerances of about 10 thousandths. That's two of your hairs. Um, this machine is also capable of tilting. What, it, what the machine does while it's tilting is uh, it tilts into the cut to not only speed up the um, time of the cut, but also to ensure a more precise piece. Um, Jose will be pulling out the part and inspecting it for any uh, defects, make sure the quality of the cut is uh, to the customer's um, expectations, and also make sure that the part is within spec. If we're not within spec, the part will be scrapped and we would have to recut and rework the, the part. Shane, I, I, I can see that you are carrying less inventory. So can you tell us about how you're controlling inventory? What is this thing behind us? Well, inventory is key to our facility. I mean, without raw materials, we're not making anything. So having your raw materials in the right location, the right place, the right time, is very important for our workflow. 
Um, here we have our material rack. Every item in here is categorized and labeled and put into a system inside of our uh, QuickBooks and other inventory softwares that we have. Um, what that allows us to do is, before, I would send one of the employees back to look through our vast amounts of materials. Mm -hmm. um, little pieces, big pieces, uh, three, is it 316, is it 304, is it cold roll, is it hot roll, you know, all these little um, questions that you would be coming back into the office asking myself for. Mm -hmm. um, and now, uh, with our nice uh, uh, material rack system, that uh, it allows us to, uh, I mean, save a big time not searching for inventory. Um, you know, and maybe someone missed the part and couldn't find it before this system. And That's loss of money right, right there. So and it's also allows you to not stock too much of inventory. Exactly, and then we don't stock too much of inventory. And then what it does, I mean, for us, just in time, you don't get much more than just in time. And this customer calls up, hey, I need some 3 8 stainless plate blanked out. Mm -hmm. um, I need it today for this oil rig that, that um, they need repaired. Mm -hmm. Guess what? True Part Manufacturing is going to be able to make that for you today because of the vast amount of inventory materials that we keep in hand, on hand. And it goes from sheet to plate to rod to bar stock. Plastics, metals, woods, it, it, and, and those are the materials that you know you're gonna sell next week. I, I have a pretty good idea of, of what the most common materials exactly. are that need to be stocked. Right. Um, These are the and, uh, and what you see here is most of the common materials that people will need: your aluminums, your stainlesses, your steels, ranging from uh, 20 gauge all the way up to two inch thick. Um, which all of our processing equipment can handle. Well, Shane, that's another example of how you, with your leadership, is actually helping this company not only when managing the resources, but actually, in, I like it when you're applying these uh, lean manufacturing tools. And I, I, I just believe that uh, you're one of those that actually can make a difference and show an example to most companies that it can be done. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that, and it couldn't be done without the SBDC and you, Gene. I mean, you know, I, this this is all brought here because of the SBDC and yourself. So, you know, we appreciate you guys helping us out because we needed it. I'm Shane Prukop, owner of True Part Manufacturing. True Part Manufacturing is a precision blanking and metal stamping facility for over 40 years. With th three generations of metal fabrication knowledge, uh, we have the skills and the machinery to get your job done. Uh, from precision blanking with lasers and water jets to metal stamping and wire forming, we've got the machinery and the capabilities to get your job done. Uh, our skilled technicians are capable of great quality control, uh, competitive pricing, and a timely uh, manner to get your products to you fast. Remember, True Part Manufacturing for all of your metal fabrication needs. 805-644-4107, or you can visit our website, www.truepartmfg.com. You can also email me at shanep at truepartmfg.com. There's no job too big or small. Please feel free to contact us at any time. The Small Business Development Center would like to thank KADYTV.com for making this presentation possible.